I don't think it's just aesthetics that's driving people to do this too. I think it's just the the motivation and the hype and energy you have when you're starting, right? Mm. Like how many times you guys have a client sit down with you and they're like, I'll do six days a week, yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. they're all fired up. It's like they something it's happened. The all them. in, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a New Year's resolution, whatever. And they're like, I'm all in now. It's like, okay, wait a second. The last, you know, five years of your life, you've been in the gym five times and you're telling me now that you want to go five, six days a week. And they really believe it because they're they're so motivated. At, at that moment, but I think it's responsible for you as a coach or a trainer to be like, hey, listen, you, you haven't done that yet, so why don't we start here? And then eventually yeah. we can move into like a split routine where you're coming in six days a week and I write yeah. you something different, but let's first build that consistency. Yeah, now that being said, if, you, if, you're, if you're relatively fit and you've been consistent for six months to a year, and I mean consistent, like you haven't missed workouts, you're seeing progress, you feel good, and you want to take your body to the next level, a split will do that. Like a good split routine is going to really take you to the next level. And some of the results that people get from a good, well-programmed split routine, I mean, are unparalleled. They really are. But you got to have all those prerequisites first. Hey, real quick, here's today's giveaway, MAPS Split. So one of you will win free access to MAPS Split. You got to do this, though. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you you'll get free access to Map Split. One more thing, we're also putting Map Split 50% off because today's episode is all about split routines. So if you're interested in just signing up, go to mapsplit.com and use the code 50SPLIT for 50% off Map Split. All right, here comes the show. All right, boys, let's do an episode on full body workouts and split workouts. You know, it's funny, I was on a podcast recently and I actually got asked this question about split routines like what was the deal with them mm -hmm. and it well that takes me back to memory lane when i first learned about the history so i'd say in my 20s uh up until that point i had followed lots of split routines and i didn't realize the history of full body workouts so i did a little bit of research and i found that pretty much every strength athlete before i'd say the 1940s or so 30s uh did full body routines um, where they would work out the whole body, you know, three days a week. And then after that, you started to see more bodybuilders and strength athletes start to do body part splits. And there were some reasons for this. One of them was that strength athletes started to do this less as a hobby and more as like they placed more focus on it. So they had more time to spend. And what they would do is they would spend more volume and more sets in their full body workouts and found that it became just, it wasn't pragmatic to work out for two and a half hours in a workout. And so bodybuilders started to split things up and say, okay, you know, I'm working my full body. It's taking me two and a half hours. What if I did instead of three days a week, I did six days a week and I did an hour workout each time instead of two and a half hour workouts, three days a week. And that's kind of what started uh, bodybuilders down that path. And then programming started to become more complex mm -hmm. and, it, you know, now, split that, routines really dominated. Is that simultaneously happening at the same time that PEDs are being introduced? Yes. Okay. So yeah. it is around the same time. It is. And, it, you know, when you look at, when you send a muscle building signal, it does spike and drop very quickly. So after about 48 to 72 hours, you see this drop in the muscle building signal. So hitting the, the each body part frequently benefits the natural lifter, especially when you're on anabolic steroids, you have this loud artificial hormonal signal that says build muscle no matter what. So you get away with not hitting it as frequently. Now, that being said, you could still hit the body frequently with the body part split, right? It just depends how you do the split. Um, you don't have to do, you know, chest on Monday and then not hit it again until the next Monday you can split the body up so that you hit each body part two or three days a week like you would with a full body routine. Um, so that, yeah, it is true that the anabolic steroids came into the fray at the same time. Nonetheless, the argument that I hear all the time for splits is that it still is the predominant way that um, advanced lifters work out, even in natural competitions. And I think a lot of it has to do with the just total amount of volume that they're contributing and the fact that they like to work out every single day, right? Yeah, I think it's still a big part of gym culture in general, especially in the commercial gym setting. Um, I think that, uh, you know, bodybuilders did such a good job of like really kind of um, sort of displaying the the body part split as, as, the, as the best way to, you know, ultimately get this 
physique where you could hyper focus on individual body parts yeah and you could spend the adequate amount of time really building and developing like certain areas of your body uh you, you know in comparison to you know taking it from a total body uh approach and so i think that that was sold very hard uh you know in those commercial gym settings and you still see it today uh but uh there's you know some good and some bad which i think we're going to bring up you, in this are there any bodybuilders that run a, a full body routine are you familiar with any none that i know of uh, they all pretty much do splits that i know of i haven't seen a, a full body routine bodybuilder in a long time and there's different kinds of splits splits allow you to have there's a lot of complexity now, I, I will say this, Justin, because as you were talking, I thought of this, because you're the athlete guy, right? You played yeah. college sports, and you're, you're almost, you've always, almost always been focused on performance, and for you, aesthetics is kind of a side effect. Uh, I think it's safe to say that body part splits are pretty much mostly appropriate for bodybuilders or people trying to improve their aesthetics. Yeah. When it comes to sports and athletic performance, it makes no sense to break the body into body parts. It's all about movement for right. athletes, but for bodybuilders or people looking to sculpt and shape their body, now you start to see some value in a body part split. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, and yeah, from an athletic perspective, it's just kind of weird to uh, really single joint focus and have yeah. um, when you really need your body to work in unison for these mm -hmm. big gross motor movement patterns that you're trying to establish. And so in this setting, it does actually, when you're trying to really focus on your aesthetics and um, you know balance it out, your physique and get certain muscles to respond uh, and grow, um, you know, there's definitely some value here. Well, I think the that's the first main positive thing about splits is that it allows you to really increase the volume on a specific muscle that you, and a lot of times when you're, you know, bodybuilding, you're looking at your physique yep. and you're looking at what body parts are lagging. And then, you know, when you go back to the drawing board or you go to your off season or getting ready for the next show, when you are programming, you are trying to build in more volume for that specific muscle group. And so, I mean, when you split up the body like that, if let's say I had, you know, lagging triceps, uh, nothing stops me from like, I'm going to do all triceps for this hour and get after it like that, where you just wouldn't do that in a full body routine. Uh -huh, you wouldn't yep. dedicate a whole hour to working your triceps out. Um, so I think that's one of the the main benefits yeah. uh, in like the and, bodybuilding. And I world. do want to touch on this because we tend to advocate full body workouts more than body part splits, but that's because uh, body part splits are more appropriate for people who don't miss workouts, who are super consistent, who, who train with lots of volume. Yeah. And we know that we're talking to a large audience. We're talking to mostly everyday people who want to get more fit. Time is but, a constraint for a lot of people. And so you yeah. have to consider all these factors. Right. But, but splits are very effective when they're applied properly to the right person. And you said the first one, which is just total volume, right? So if you train the whole body three days a week versus the whole body over six days, you're going to spend a lot of time in the gym in one workout or, or three workouts versus six. Now, there could be some benefit to that where you only can make it to the gym three days a week, or you could look at the detriment in the sense that, um, you know, if you're doing a two hour workout, that second hour isn't super effective. And so like what body parts do you leave for the second half of your workout, right? right. Whereas like you said, Adam, when you're trying to sculpt and shape your body, today's arm day and my arms are a weakness. Well, I could spend a lot of time on, on just uh, training my arms. So the volume per workout aspect really is uh, one of the main attributes or one of the main positives I would say of a, of a oh, it's also great um, for chasing the pump right so I mean we talk about the the benefits oh, yeah. of um, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy right so trying to fill the the, the muscle bellies full of fluid uh, nothing I think is is better than that than doing a, a split routine okay. because it allows you to dedicate so much time work volume towards a single muscle group where you know, that, that's one of the things that even though um, I love full body routines, uh, I don't get as much of a, a massive pump as I do if I'm targeting one or two muscles in an entire workout. Oh, yeah. Do do chest, shoulders, and triceps on one day versus full body. Right. You're going to get a bigger pump on the chest, shoulders, and triceps when that's all you're doing versus the full body. And that has uh, yeah. benefits in its, yeah. by itself, you know? It does. Uh, you, maximizing the pump does a few different things. One is it increases, like you said, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So 
if you look at a muscle and you, and you analyze the size of the muscle, a percentage of it is due to the actual muscle fibers, but a larger percentage, believe it or not, is due to all of the non-muscle fiber structures within muscle, which is the fluid, the blood, the glycogen, the capillaries, the connective you know, tissues that are in between the muscle fibers, all that stuff makes up a larger percentage of the muscle. So if, when you're trying to develop this visual look, the pump is very important. This is why bodybuilders have valued the pump for so long is that they know that it contributes to the look of a particular muscle. And if, especially if you have a lagging body part, it's, you know, in terms of development, getting that muscle to get a really good pump is the first step to bringing up a lagging body part. If you've ever had a lagging body part, you probably also have the same body part be challenging to get a pump on, right? So if it's your chest, then you know, yeah, it's hard to get my chest to get a pump. Unlike my shoulders, which is a strong mm -hmm. body part, right? But if I have an entire workout dedicated to just chest and maybe another body part or two, well, now I can really focus on getting blood pumped into well, the muscle. Right. Yeah, and on that uh, end, in terms of the, um, you know, from the performance end of just <laughs> focusing on the movement patterns, a lot of times you could be compensating, you can be, um, you know, over dominant in certain muscle groups and and be somewhat, you know, neglecting yeah. some of these like uh, body parts that that are. Uh, could be a focus if you if you if you hyper focus them in in a hypertrophy setting like this. I also found that I mean uh, we we talk about the importance of practice, right? And when you split the body part up in uh, muscle groups like that, I get a lot of practice on one muscle. So I also started to piece together like um, combinations of exercises and how well they went. That's together. That's a great point. Like, I mean, that body part splits is what led me down <clears throat> realizing like, oh, when I do you know, a, uh, in close, uh, you know, bench press. And then I go right over to, you know, overhead extensions on the cable or something. Like, oh my God, I get this massive. Pump yes. on. I wouldn't have known that unless I was doing a body part split where I was doing so many exercises for just the triceps and messing with so many different. That's a great yeah. point. Like I'll give you another one. Right. And I know, especially you, Adam, you're going to know this, like a great three exercise combination for a body part yeah. would be compound lift, uh, stretch exercise and squeeze exercise. Yeah. Right. If you do a combination, like if, and you could do this with any muscle group, you do it with triceps. Okay. Dips. There's your compound lift, stretch, overhead tricep extension, yeah. squeeze, tricep press down. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you could do this with your chest, right? Bench press, fly, cable crossover. Right. So combination exercise, being able to combine the right exercises, that'll give you the best pump. Mm -hmm. You have that ability in a split because you're doing so much in one workout. Yeah, you're not doing that in a full body routine right. where no. you're only doing a few sets of one for that one muscle group. Right, right. You're not going to do three exercises like you listen for four or five sets. Yes, it's too yes. much. Um, the one of the biggest pluses with a body part split routine is it allows you to really pick up lagging body parts. Like if I know today is back day and that is a weak body part, rather than a full body workout where I'm only doing one exercise for back today. I'm doing three or four. I am really, it really lends itself well to focusing on the squeeze, the feel, the pump. And also something that isn't talked about a lot when it comes to building muscle, which is strength endurance. We talk a lot about maximal strength, how much weight you can lift with one rep. We talk a lot about even, you know, hypertrophy rep ranges, but we don't talk too much about strength endurance. If you take a power lifter and you have them train with a bodybuilder in a full workout, the power lifter is going to crush at the beginning of the workout, but you keep following the workout towards the end and you watch the power lifter get his ass kicked because the bodybuilder has this ability to set after set after set mm -hmm. to perform. That's how I was always able to get Justin. <laughs> he's technically stronger than me in most lifts, but then we, yeah. you know, but by 45 minutes in though, guess All who's those stronger? those supersets, man, they <laughs> add up real fast. And but where you die. at now, guy? Yeah. Yeah. But that, that does contribute to hypertrophy sure. is the ability to do yeah. set after set and bodybuilders can do that very, very well. In fact, that's quite unique to bodybuilders, right? Is to be able to do set after set on a muscle group and continue to perform. Whereas other people are like, I'm not, you know, after six sets, I'm totally tapped out. Well, that, you don't, you can't do that in a full body routine because it's just too much volume in a workout. But with the split, when you're only doing two or three body parts or one body part, uh, you can definitely do that. Well, and, and, and it's also uh, very beneficial for someone who really likes to go to the gym. Like if you're so, one of the things that I'm I like. I'm so glad you said that because we have a lot of fitness fanatics that, they're like, well, what do I do on my days off? I know. Yeah, right. Or they, they just, they, or they really it. want to go to the gym six days or seven days a week. Yeah. Um, and I could totally relate to that. I like when I was in my routine of, at you know, right after lunchtime, I was going to the gym for an hour. Like, 
I liked being in there seven days a week and just would modify and change or focus on just a, a single body part that I was lagging, like you were saying earlier. Like uh, one of those, one of the things I liked about a split routine is it it allowed me to be able to go to the gym basically every day and you know pump up a muscle group because <clears throat> I could just split up the body yeah. in a way that allowed and, it to. And you can't, you know, I, I don't like when people discredit that because uh, that's a behavioral thing that I think is really important. If you're someone that loves going to the gym daily, okay? I'm one of those people. Obviously, I, I made it uh, my career to work in gyms, right? I love it. So we can't discredit that. You love going to the gym every day. Okay, well, why don't we divide your workouts up and divide your body parts up so you can work out every single day? Because part of the value of exercise isn't just the results you get on your physique. It's also the quality of life that you you get from it and the and the and how much you enjoy it, right? So if you like to work out every single day, a full body routine, you can't necessarily, I mean, you can, I guess you could do mobility and stretching and stuff like that, but I get it for the, for the, the muscle building fanatic. It's like, but I want to go to the gym and lift. I want to lift every single day. Well, splits allow you to do that. Now you're in the gym six days a week. Yeah. You're not overtraining and you're lifting weights every single one of those days. Well, as much as I love compound lifts and I love, you know, performance training, it is fun. <clears throat> it's a fun change of yeah. pace to really you know, focus in on the feel of the muscle. Like you said, the stretch, the squeeze, you know, like these other attributes uh, that your your muscle uh, provides that, um, you know, you could train it that way and get a completely different experience. And I, th I think that it's, it provides a lot of value to, to give it different type of stimulus as well. Yeah. You also have uh, the ability now to apply advanced intensity techniques. So like if today's back day, um, and I'm doing, I don't know, four exercises for back, three sets each, so 12 sets in a whole workout. Well, now a drop set, partials, right? Uh, super sets at the end or whatever. Now it starts to make sense because I'm hammering that muscle group in one workout. It doesn't make sense in the full body workout so much. If I'm doing one exercise for back. You're going to pick I, one of the best ones. Yeah, I got a oh, straight set barbell row, yeah. right? So I never get to apply, you know, strip sets. I never get to apply partials. Because it just doesn't make sense. It's not really a worthy trade. But if it's only back day, now there may be some value to applying some of these advanced training techniques. So you can have a lot of fun with them and, and, and there's value in them. Now, I don't think you should do them all the time, but if you're advanced, throwing them in here and there, it makes more sense in a split workout. And you can start to derive value and benefit from them, and primarily being the pump, the ability for a muscle to handle lots of volume in one workout, the strength endurance I talked about. Full body workouts don't really lend themselves well uh, to doing that so so much. Yeah, it it this is where it would make sense to see uh, a bunch of isolation or cable exercises or machine exercises in a day because you you're just hitting that one muscle group. Normally, we would say, okay, if you're doing your back, how dare you miss one of the yeah. you know biggest compound lifts for it? But that's okay. You're in a split and you're going to come back and hit back another day, or maybe you did really heavy rows three days earlier. Mm -hmm. And so you're still a little sore for that. So I'm going to go all cables and machines that day. So it allows you to kind of modify things. I think a little bit differently when you, when you're focused just on one muscle. Yeah, And by the way, when you do a split, that means some of your workouts are going to be really hard and some are going to be not so hard. Like they have leg to be. day. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm in the gym doing 20 sets for legs, like that's going to be a brutal workout, right? Oh, yeah. I go in the gym and I'm doing, you know, 30 sets for arms still. <laughs> it's going to be easy Yeah. in comparison. So um, it, you get this, you, you get this nice titrating effect of intensity. Um, and you also have uh, oftentimes more recovery time in between workouts. Splits typically will train the whole body twice a week. If you look at the way splits are designed, good ones are about twice a week. Full body routines typically revolve around three days a week. So you get a little bit more recovery time in between body parts. Now, of course, you make up for it with the increased volume. But if you're used to a full body routine, where you're hitting the whole body three days a week, going to a higher volume, maybe less frequent type of workout, go from three to two, you may see some additional benefit from yeah. doing that. But also too, I mean, if we're going to start talking about maybe some, some negatives uh, that, that stand out for me, like if you're, if you're, for instance, the whole entire leg day, I would, I, and I've been through this myself. It's very easy to overtrain, yeah, uh, and to uh, <laughs> to get too much uh, volume for that day. When you go to repeat them, you know, later that week, it's it, it makes it very hard to get through that. Yeah, because you get caught up in the mentality of today's shoulders, today's biceps and triceps, today's legs. Yeah. 
So then you start to get caught up in the mentality of like, well, I, I got to push through yeah, and destroy my body part. And so in my experience, uh, this is why I like split routines for people who are a little more advanced people who aren't as advanced, they tend to go there and they tend to overtrain uh, doing a split. Um, so that overtraining potential is higher, mainly because of the mentality. You know, Today I'm only doing two body parts, but I need to leave the gym and feel like I did when I did a full body workout. It's a totally different feeling. Well, this is why I think our splits for someone who is just starting in the gym, why it is, this is the main reason why it's not good for them. It's really hard for a beginner to know how to judge intensity. That's something that you learn over over time and so practice. True. So true. And you give a client a hour to do one or two muscles. It good luck not overdoing that. Right. I mean, either one, they're gonna go, they're gonna uh, grossly overtrain it, or they're gonna undertrain it because they're so concerned that they're gonna overtrain it, so they don't do anything intense at all, and they just kind of touch weights for an hour. But uh, that's why I don't like it for a beginner. Is that you know, the beginner is still trying to learn their body and figure out like, you know, what happens when I do these, this exercise, that exercise at this intensity, do I, how sore do I get? Yep. Um, real, real hard to, to, to gauge that when you you're doing four or five different exercises for three to four different yep. sets in an entire workout. It's just, it's a, it's a ton of volume. Yeah. Another reason why, and this is probably one of the main reasons why I don't recommend splits to a lot of people, um, except for people who are, you know, again, more advanced and consistent is that when you tend to see because as a show, as a trainer and a coach, and we all do this, all, the three of us talk this way. When we train clients, we don't just look at the month or the you know the two month period. We we we've trained people for years, so we look at the big picture. And people tend to miss workouts mm -hmm. uh, unless you're really really consistent. Um, like I said, if you're advanced and consistent, this doesn't apply. But if you're like the average person, you miss workouts, and you tend to skip the workouts that you don't like, mm -hmm. and so they tend to be the same workouts, like the guy that skips leg day or the woman that skips arm day. So it's like, yeah, I got a split routine uh, six days a week. But if you look over the course of a year, I missed, you know, 12 workouts and, you know, nine of them were leg day. Yeah. So it's like that didn't happen on accident. I think a lot of times too, people don't even th realize what they're doing. In yes. other words, like they, like you say that statement and I, and I know there's, <clears throat> there's people, cause I was this person who would be like, well, I don't, I don't intentionally skip leg day. I don't do that. Yeah. But what I would do is this, cause Rarely ever did I have a whole year of five days a week training with no interruption. It's very common that <laughs> once a month, you know, or at least every other month, there's some sort of an interruption there where I miss four or five days yep. and then I go back to the gym. Well, when I would go back in the gym, I'd always start my routine back w with my favorite muscle groups or like back where the routine started, like chest day is on Monday. And then it would go yeah. to, you know, shoulders and back. And it's like, so what would end up happening is I... I would fall off and maybe I, I fell off on Thursday and let's say Friday was leg day, but then I was off for a whole week. Well, you start, start back up on I Friday. Start, yeah, I start back over again. Right. I don't start on legs where I left yeah. off. You where, gravitate to your strengths. That, and it took me a long time to really start to piece that together that, wow, I've been doing this for years and that does add up over years of, of lifting consistently. And one of the things I did to change that is now – no matter what, I always start with the lagging body part. So if I have a two or three day interruption, even if the last thing I did, so let's say, and I did this a lot when I was trying to develop my shoulders, my shoulders were a lagging body part. I needed to develop that. I hit uh, shoulders on Monday, let's say, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, I missed uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I would start back at shoulders, like even though I was yeah. due for say back legs or something else, because that's a lagging body part. And even though I didn't miss it that week, I never wanted to miss that because it was a lagging body part. Yeah, this is why I think splits are can be excellent for the dedicated and the consistent and not great for the undedicated or the inconsistent. So mm -hmm. if you're a fitness fanatic and you don't miss workouts, splits are great. If you miss workouts, splits are not so great because with a full body workout, if you miss a workout, well, you're still hitting your whole body again the next time you work out. Yeah. If you're if you miss a workout and a split, I can guarantee you over the course of a year, it's usually the workouts that you don't like the most. So if you're hardcore, you're consistent, you're super serious about your results, you've got some experience. Split routines are phenomenal. If that's not you, you're probably better off doing a full body routine. Well, it, it also requires uh, a bit more um, understanding around programming. Totally. You have it's to, way more complex. When you when you are hammering a single body part or two, 
uh, you have to, and this uh, this doesn't matter if you're doing body part split or full body. When you program, period, you're you're you should be programming in a way that you're also thinking about future workouts, right? Like, I mean, when you look at when you yep. unpack a maps program, when we sit down in those conversations and we start, okay, we want to do this on on day it's one. It's not just throwing exercises. For no, body parts. it's not, and it's not just that workout. All of us are are writing that, going like, okay, well, if they do this, this, and this. When we ask them to go do legs again or back or whatever, whatever on Wednesday again, we have to take into consideration what they just did on Monday and mm -hmm. what they're probably going to feel like. How taxed on, they are. Yeah, on Wednesday. So that means we probably shouldn't run X, Y, and Z exercise because that's going to be too much intensity. So we want to be somewhere. You know, so well, you have to think of those things. And this is where it becomes like extra difficult to uh, program in compound lifts and and you know the major. Yeah, like where do you put deadlifts? Back where, day or where do you day? put them? And yeah. and you know and and unfortunately. A lot of times you'll see um, people just end up gravitating towards machines or maybe less effective yes. type exercises to fill that space because, um, you know, the focus is that body part. And this is just an easier way to accomplish that, which then, you know, isn't moving them forward uh, and giving them quite as much progress as they'd hope for. Yeah, like try to do a chest exercise that doesn't involve shoulders and triceps, right? Try to do, uh, like, where do you put deadlifts in a body part split? Like programming workouts, there's a lot that goes into it. And unless you're an experienced coach or trainer, um, it doesn't seem that way because on its surface, on its face, it looks like, oh, it's just exercises and body parts. And yeah, I know, I know 10 exercises per body part. It, no, it's way more complex. When you're adding days to the routine, you're adding more variables. Like to, here's a simple example, right? Um, let's say you, you work out Wednesday is back and Thursday is legs. Okay. So do you deadlift then on Wednesday? And if you do, then can you squat the following day? Probably not. You're deadlifting hard on Wednesday. You ain't squatting the day after. So if you do want to deadlift on Wednesday, then the next day you work out legs, you might want to do something like lunges or Bulgarian split stand squats or leg presses, for example, right? This is that's just one silly thing, right? Yeah. Or what if I do hamstrings and I want to do heavy stiff-legged deadlifts? Well, then what? how does that affect squats or how does that affect deadlifts on the day before? Or what if... I'm doing a heavy bench press and then the day after shoulders um, and I do an overhead press and my shoulders are still, still sore or tired from. So there's all these programming questions. So whenever a average person writes a split routine for themselves, I can pick it apart way easier than I can when someone writes a full body workout because a full body workout, less room for air, less room for air. Now that doesn't mean there isn't a lot of program that goes into full body sure. workouts, but there's less variables, way less variables. So split routines tend to be, if I had to take all workouts and categorize them by good programming or bad programming, a greater percentage of split routines would be bad programming mm -hmm. than full body workouts. So if you are doing a split routine, the value in, in following one that's well-written and proven is much higher than, the, than it would be to do a full body workout because you want one that's written expertly because there's lots of things you might not consider. And this is actually why, this is a fact now, people would think it's the op opposite, but it's not true. Injuries tend to occur higher in split routines. Now you think that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Full body workouts, you should get hurt more. No, tends to be split routines because people don't consider the previous workout, how it affects today's workout, how that affects tomorrow's workout, how this week's workout affects next week's no, with workout. Splits, so it, with splits, it's, there's almost always <clears throat> either an over-application of, of compound lifts or an under-application of them. Yes. It's one. It, it's rarely- You're right, because they'll, they'll err on the side spot. of all isolation machines. Yeah, then. like so that's what you'll see in a lot of these. And that's, what, that's my biggest critique <clears throat> on a lot of bodybuilding routines that you see out there is they're just all isolation. They completely ignore all the yep. compound lifts. It's like, Jesus, those are the biggest bang for your buck. Right. Then you go the other direction where someone's like, oh, I know those are all great exercises. Got to make sure they get them in. Then there's too much of it for somebody who's training five, six days a week. So yeah. that balance of, of how to integrate the, the lifts with the biggest bang for your buck, the right amount in a week without overdoing it. So you get stuck in that recovery trap you talked about. That's difficult to do in a split. It's yep. it's more difficult to do than I think in a, in a, a very straightforward you know full body routine two to three times a week. Yeah. Now the the one of the positives we talked about also can become a negative. Now earlier we talked about how a positive would be that you get to work out more often. Mm -hmm. That can also be a negative for some <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah. Like if you're you know you got a family, you got a job, um, and you're just being realistic with yourself. And you're like I, I'm not going to be able to go to the gym consistently five days a week or six days a week. Right. Okay. A split's not for you. 
It's not mm-hmm. for you. Just don't do it. Go, you're better off doing a full body routine. Um, so that can be a, come a negative. It could definitely become a negative that you're in order to hit your entire body adequately and appropriately and with maximum effectiveness and not neglect body parts and not create imbalances. You don't want to skip workouts. Well, if there's six, if, if six out of seven days requires you go to the gym, the odds that you're going to miss a workout goes up through the roof. So you have to be very honest with yourself unless you're dedicated, hardcore, consistent, and have some experience, uh, then more days in the gym becomes a negative. Now, if you are all those things, more days in the gym becomes a positive. Well, it really, I mean, this is why there's so much value in in learning both and utilizing both yeah. because it just depends on what what season of life you're in. Yeah. Um, if you've been listening to this podcast since the beginning, you definitely heard me advocating for going to the gym seven days a week at one point there was a period there for several years where i was like when we were first talking about full body routine and sal was talking about training three times to four times a week and i'm like no i like to go seven days and that's where i was at in my life i was going seven days a week and i like to train that way i don't train that way right now so i now my routine looks more like a full body routine than it does look like any sort of a body part split so it really depends on where you're currently at in your life and what your current goals are. My goals right now have very little to do with sculpting and changing my body. It's more maintaining, staying healthy, yeah. staying mobile, staying strong, and just over overall, like that's where I'm at. Yeah. Where I was beginning this podcast, I was in the in the heat of sculpting and building a physique. You were and competing. Love. Yeah. So I, I think it's important that um, no matter who you are, that you you understand the nuances of of both types of programming and know when and how to use them for yourself. Yeah, now I'm going to add to that because I like to work out every day, not for the, I enjoy this too, but this isn't the main driver. I, I, I do like the physique effects and sculpting my body. That's all fun. But the main reason why I like to work out every day is it's a form of meditation for me and I start my day that way. So I wake up in the morning and I work out. It's the first thing that I do. And I notice when I work out first, uh, I'm better at work. I'm better. I'm more patient with my kids and my wife, and I have more energy and I feel better. So I would prefer to work out daily and and pick my favorite form of exercise daily, which is strength training, just because I enjoy it the most. So a body part split would work more in that case, right? Versus uh, where it's, you know, full body three days a week. Now I've got three other days. I got to think of something else to do in the morning. And sure, I can think of things to do. I could do mobility. I could do other types of exercises, maybe some conditioning work. And I might do that in the future. But right now, uh, I like to lift and I like to do it every single day, but not necessarily for the sculpting effects, although that follows along with it, but rather I like starting the day off that way. So whether that's a pro or a con, you got to be very honest with yourself. Again, if you're dedicated, hardcore, your physique is very important to you. This is where you're at in your life and you've got some experience. It could be a plus. You got other stuff going on in your life. A uh, five or six day a week routine is not necessarily well, I think a plus. that's one of the main reasons why we highlight like total body workouts is, is your everyday average person. I don't think they consider what kind of dedication it requires yeah. for you to pull off a split. And it's always um, something that um, aesthetically may, may be driving you uh, in that direction, but there's a way to get, you know, th- that aesthetic version, uh, you know, with total body workouts. But if you're truly somebody who is really fine tuning and sculpting and, mm-hmm. you know, really getting after it and you're in that phase of life, like Adam is saying, you know, this may apply perfectly for your goals. I don't think it's just aesthetics that's driving people to do this too. I think it's just the the motivation and the hype and energy you have when you're starting, right? Mm-hmm. Like how many times do you guys have a client sit down with you and they're like, I'll do six days a week, yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. they're all fired up. It's like they something it's happened. The all them. in, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a new year's resolution, whatever. And they're like, I'm all in now. It's like, okay, wait a second. The last, you know, five years of your life, you've been in the gym five times and you're telling me now that you want to go five, six days a week. And they really believe it because they're they're so motivated at, at that moment but i think it's responsible for you as a coach or a trainer to be like hey listen yeah you haven't done that yet so why don't we start here and then eventually yeah. we can move into like a split routine where you're coming in six days a week and i write yeah. you something different but let's first build that consistency yeah now that being said if you if you're if you're relatively fit and you've been consistent for six months to a year and i mean consistent like you haven't missed workouts you're seeing progress you feel good and you want to take your body to the next level, a split will do that. Like a good split routine 
is going to really take you to the next level. And some of the results that people get from a good, well-programmed split routine, I mean, are unparalleled. They really are. But you got to have all those prerequisites first. Now, we wrote a, a split routine called Map Split, and we waited. That was actually, I want to say, the fourth or fifth program yeah. that we wrote. And we specifically did that because we knew if we wrote it before, first, everybody would have done that and ignored the other programs. Sure. But we waited. We waited because we wanted to make sure people had the tools. And then we sat down and said, okay, let's write a split routine the right way. Let's program it so that it works well. So that, And by the way, here's some mistakes that you see in lots of split routines. Mistake number one, they hit the whole body once a week. Big mistake. I don't care if you do full body. I don't care if you do split. Studies are very clear on this. The best results that you'll get in your body is when your body parts are hit two to three times in a week. So how do you accomplish this with a split? Well, that means that two days in that week, you're hitting chest and back, or two days in that week, you're hitting shoulders and, and arms and legs, right? So you can still do a split, but still hit your body with adequate frequency. The split routines that are always subpar for most people are the ones where- One day you crush it, then you rest seven. Yeah, and you're not hitting it at all, yeah. right? Here's number two, big mistake. Going to failure on every set. This is a, a mistake for most workouts, but especially for a six-day week routine, split routine. Just too much intensity all the time, too much volume. And then the third mistake is junk volume. This is when people don't know how to program workouts properly, and they do what you said, Adam, where because they are like, oh, man, I'm, my, my, my back is sore from deadlift, so I can't squat, and my shoulders are sore from bench pressing, so I can't hour finishers. So it's just a bunch <laughs> of isolation exercises. Yeah, yeah. Well, today's shoulders, but I don't want my triceps to get tired, so I'm doing laterals and cable laterals and cable flies and you know, like all this isolation exercises. And so those are the three mistakes, not hitting the whole body frequently enough, throwing failure at everything and just a bunch of junk volume because they don't know how to program properly. So if you see those in your split routine, throw it away. It's not effective. And that's what gave split routines kind of a bad uh, name in my, my book. And that's why we, we push people to go full body. But if you're going to do a good split routine, follow a good one. And of course, we wrote one uh, called Map Split. And I do believe... Uh, because we're talking about in this episode, I got clearance here from Doug uh, that we're going to make that one 50% off for this episode. Is that thumbs up? That is a thumbs up. Okay. So uh, you can follow Map Split, which we wrote. It's a split routine. You're in the gym, uh, I believe, six days a week, if I'm not mistaken. One day is a mobility day, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to sign up, you go to mapsplit.com. So M A P S S P L I T.com. And then the code. For the 50% off discount on that is 50 split. So 50SPLIT. Uh, look, if you want more free information from us, head over to mindpumpfree.com. And you can also find us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 